<laughs> Roger. Like that? Yeah. Is that a good starting spot? And then we'll end out at about this uh, at about this viewpoint, and then I think uh, turn to the port and start to slowly move as if you're surveying. Okay. Okay. So. T uh So just to review, and interrupt me if you if you have a uh, the thoughts. Um, we're going to back up as much as you can once once we're happy with Atalanta's position and the ship hold and everything is all happy. All right. Um, you're going to back up as much as you can away from the wall. We will go all lights off for about 15 seconds, 30 seconds, including at Atalanta. All Get right. its lights off. And then as you start to move forward towards that wall, we're going to turn on the lights of Atalanta first until the wall starts to reveal. And then I'll call for lights on of Hercules, the f and that'll be just the floodlights forward once we get a little closer and it'll, it'll bloom up and, and reveal this, this, this uh, formation. So this shot is just the dolly forward of revealing this wall. Right. Sound good? Yeah, so I'm going to slide to the right here a little bit, and yep. I'll, I'll have uh, Atlanta bring your head to the right. And I really don't the actually mind that uh, shadow. We can't we can't hide for this show that we are on an ROV, so I, I kind of want us to own it and be able to see this creepy, cool, awesome, giant shadow. All right. So don't, and, don't, uh, don't let that mess you up. Okay, if you don't mind it in front, I can get actually closer to Atlanta if I'm right between Atlanta and the wall. Yep, I don't mind it. We can't get away from it, so let's let's own it. Okay, owning. I actually can see better out here because uh, you know Atlanta's lights can get around her when I'm right in front. It blocks it. So you'll get a little better lighting, I think, on the wall. You know what yep. I mean? You see, as I move to the left here, it gets darker. Well, if you bring your head to the left, let's just see. Can't see anything now. Your camera's running away. You'll have to tilt down. There. Let's try coming down about five meters. Boom, look at that. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. That, that's just the mate. Is that her? Is it uh, Iris open all the way in there? Who's that for? Oh, it was for Pete. What was that? Is that Herc's Iris all the way open? All the way open. Huh. Nice. What a difference. But both perfectly acceptable. So that uh, kind of put... Uh, in the spotlight there, as it were. Uh, can you tilt? I'm just let me play with your camera for a minute. I want to see where the spot is. Where is it brighter? It's usually there's the top of the light ring on Atalanta. Yep, and I'm just looking at the fish eye view here and it's it's perfectly acceptable what we have going on i mean that is pretty epic yeah it's remarkable <laughs> i think uh can you raise hercules by maybe actually i'm sorry back off hercules by about a meter raj from the wall yeah yep. how can i can i get that so that you can see
Yeah, that's a, uh, not very good motion, JPEG Whoops. stream. Highly no, compressed. Yeah, this is really bad, but here we are. But as Fleetwood Max says, are we recording? There's a riff that goes with that. Pete will know. <laughs> there we go. I got some more useful view. That's the, that is the port side camera, fisheye camera, uh, instead of the cinema camera. Do you like that just to help? Um, the reason I have the cinema camera is because I can see the stereo cameras. So if I get into trouble, I have the, well, I could do that with the Zeus camera, yeah. but... Uh, bang, bang out Zeus a little wider. It's up to you. Dealer's choice. It's your... I, I like the stereo camera there. Okay. Then we'll ride with that. That's a port side stereo camera. I, I mean, sorry, the cinema camera. Oh, so switch it back. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, it gives me uh, something uh, reference, like... Uh, when you're driving your car and you can see the hood of your car when you're pulling into a parking space. I hear you. Okay, I'm ready to go if uh, you guys are. I'm pretty happy with this as a start. Is everybody ready? Can you just go over what we're going to back Herc away from the wall into yeah. so the darkness? And just to review the battle plan here. This is a dolly reveal shot. Dolly being uh, it's a moving forward shot as we as we approach the wall we're revealing what's in front of us so we're not going to be moving atalanta atalanta is going to stay at this spot i like it as long as rov likes it i'm happy then we'll keep rov uh atalanta there it's going to be uh with the lighting configuration everything like that just perfectly steady uh dan you're going to pull back that rov um as far as you can on that tether um we're going to call for an all lights off on both Atalanta and Hercules. You're gonna, uh, we're gonna wait. I'm gonna start the record. We're gonna wait collectively for about 15 to 20 seconds as a pre-roll. Right You're gonna start to move forward. I'll say start, move forward. We're gonna wait for about 10 seconds. You're gonna head forward at a nice, slow, stately uh, pace as normal for, for Hercules. Um, then Humen, I'm gonna ask for lights on on Atalanta, that's going to pop as uh, and reveal the cliff face as we approach it. And then the final thing is we'll call for lights on on Hercules. And can you just go ahead and try a lights on on Hercules so we can see what that'll look like? And uh, I lost the entire plot there after lights off, but um, <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, uh, the, all the Atalanta lights don't come on at once. He's yeah, got six ask. buttons over there to deal yeah. with. So great. Do you want them to like slowly turn them on or turn them on as fast us? as you can? How about how about show us right now? Do it fast yeah. as you can. Let me, uh, I'm going to turn them all off. I'll turn Hertz lights off too. All right. Fast. Uh, wait, wait. So I still have a couple lights on on Herc. I have my starboard port lights on. I don't you care. Want, you want those off as well? or? Whatever you need for situational awareness. I don't need anything. I got instruments here. All right, human. Show us. Show us, show us the cinema here. Okay. Don't panic, audience. That's uh, us playing with the lights. All right, fast as we can. Ooh. So when the first one comes on, it's gonna, you know, the camera's gonna freak out, and then it's yep. probably by the time it does that, he'll have the rest on. All right, so we'll just uh, we'll operate with that, human. Okay, sounds good. So again, I'll call for lights on on Atlanta. I'll call for all lights off once the RV's in position. I'm gonna start the record. Um, I'll call for ROV forward. I'll call for Atalanta on, and finally Hercules on within about five seconds after Atalanta, okay? Okay, I'm up to lights off and Hercules forward. Huh? <laughs> better. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move back now. So, and I'm in uh, auto depth by the way, so in th it's going to be a little bouncy compared to auto out, but um, it should keep the same wall view as I fly up in the top. God, look at as you as we <laughs> back away. It's just so cool. And look at that. That is quite impressive. Dan, mind if I DVL reset while we're... Yeah, I'm out of auto dark. XY at the moment. It's going to be... Yeah. 
So that's 10 meters away from the wall there. I'm praying, praying for the best with my tether here. I can't, uh, I can't auto this because uh, we're in and out of, we don't have a stable enough uh, DVL. So I gotta rely on good old USBL and Mesotech. So Jonathan, the difference between the two images we're seeing, the, uh, the lower image is her Zeus cam, right? Yep. And then the wide field camera array, the cinema cam is on yep. the top screen here. Yep. Okay. Uh, and that's the sensor. Sorry, stand by. Yeah, um, yeah that's the total you see, sensor. You see in the top of that view there, the tether? Yep. Dropping over the top of the vehicle? Yep. I'm 20 meters away from the wall there. And uh, I may or may not have enough DVL yeah. to hold. But if I go any further, uh, bad things might happen. Okay. So I'm directly under Atlanta now. I can... Uh, I can go another 20 meters back. Uh, just, just no, go, actually, go for I'm, as much as safe right now, okay? I'm uh, probably, the DBL is lying to us. I don't know. Yeah, looks like you're back here. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm west of Atalanta now, because you see the tether draping over my head. So normally we would pick up Atalanta to deal with that. If I drape it too much, it'll get caught in my... Lights hanging over the I front. I fully of the trust you. Well, no. what I'm asking is that is that far enough for you? Yes, that's far enough for me. Roger. Um, I'm drifting a little bit. Now. Okay. All right, I'm already recording. So, if you're happy, ROV happy. ROV is happy. Um, okay, let's do all lights off. Roger. We're going to do a 15 second wait here. 15 seconds in the dark. Wonder what's going to happen when we don't have any lights. A lot can happen in 15 seconds. All right, um, ROV, start forward slowly. Roger. We'll wait about five seconds. And Atlanta lights on. <laughs> Except for the uh -oh. focus. <laughs> oh, All there right. it goes. There yeah, it goes. no, 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 no. That's cinematic. Stop, stop the shot. Stop cinematic the shot. effect. Okay, so you can keep the lights on. Can we reset the Hercules? I'm gonna figure out what just happened there with. And so it's in autofocus, right? It's going to try and yeah, focus on had, the dock. I had cap off. Stand by. All right, just standing by. Any uh, bets on how many times we're going to do this before we get the shot? <laughs> Don't want to rush things. No rushing. That tether in the view is... Uh, it is what it is. If my boss sees that, I'm going to really hear about it. It's typically All not right, allowed. let's do that again. Roger. Lights off? Lights off. Roger. Ooh. I think the All right, lights closer. on. As we're, as, and move forward. Yeah, moving forward. That's better. There we go. Hey, look, the tether's gone. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Great. So, nice and slow. Nice and slow. App, ah, stop. Stop it. I have to do... <clears throat> Hold on. Hold Reset. It. Take three? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think that's the data logger responsibility. Take keep three. The, keep the hash marks here. 
Should I uh, back up a little, John, and get set yeah, up for the next? Yeah, back up, get reset, please, right. sir. What are you adjusting? Where's the reset? Uh, I'm just trying to figure it. It, it shouldn't be re-autofocusing on this, but it is, so I'm just doing a focus change. Now, what was my setting for... Um, Which camera? What was my setting for focus on 212, the port side camera? Starboard side camera. Yep, two one two. Herc's holding like three beams. That's impressive. Witness the three beam power of Station Geek. John, ask what's your question again? We're looking at the. I'm looking at record. the focus position, which I think I would have read out a little bit later than. Um, you than had the auto. Settings. You had auto focus off, and then we didn't. We didn't record the focus settings. You had 940. It was a second. Uh, it was a second log entry. Got Kristen. it. 912. You had 1100 on that one and 940 over here. Okay, I'm good then. Okay, take three. Take three. 20 meters away uh, from it the wall. It was the most recent. Uh, Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Of course you are. Love you, man. Okay. Love you too, babe. Two one nine one two. Camera should be eight hundred. Okay, all lights off. Roger. Continuous off. Continuous off. Continuous off. And recording. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven ROV forward. ROV moving forward. 10, 11, 12, Atlanta on. Absolutely epic. Totally. Keep on moving forward. Yeah, we're about 15 until, meters away from the until wall Until we now. see that cool shadow. Should slowly reveal from the bottom. I should have put my other sonar in not polar mode. <laughs> Arranged out on one of the other ones. It's a long time. There's our shadow coming through. We're about oh, 10 that's gonna be meters cool. from the wall now. Should More see beans. Faster? More beans. The audience is getting bored, that's what he said. Yeah, well, if we're is getting bored here, happen? then uh, an audience member will get bored. Keep on going. There and you go. 7.5 meters from the wall. All right, now full beans on the lights forwards. Uh, Hercules? Yep, Hercules. Hercules lights, uppers, and mids. Whoa. Epic. Now let's uh, pan to the left or the right. Whatever your dealer's choice, and uh, fly uh, slide the along or? the rocks. Yeah, I'll just fly the vehicle along the rocks. Right? Yep. That's perfect. Angle it a little bit more so it kind of looks down the length as you're moving. Oh yeah. I'm gonna very gently change my heading to the left there. Yep. You'll be kind of flying a lateral 45 to be able to show just the totality of. Look at these steps. It's going to get length. dark on wow. your left side if I go any more than that. It's about 45 off the wall there. Great. Keep moving as much as you can. Until it hurts. Yep. 
Okay, now slowly, let's start backing away and start uh, ladder, or start swiveling to the Heading starboard to the right. side. Yeah. Yep, swivel to the starboard side as you continue backing away from yeah. that and keep the lighting configuration. And let's raise altitude. Uh, altitude's all over because uh, we're on a cliff and the DVL's in and out. Oh, okay, that's fine. Approximately 11 meters there, but it's... Make, make Hercules go, ooh, let's keep going. Yeah, keep turning. Let's reveal that. And then we can go back the other way. Keep going, keep turning, keep turning. Maybe uh, forward lights off. Both of them? That's yep. the lowers. Both of them. First. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's keep uh, recording on that. Oh. Um, and let's uh, let's fly slowly forward like this. Roger. And uh, Atalanta, if you wanted to, try to rotate to the starboard side so that that light pool remains very slightly ahead of Hercules. Okay. You, you got do, this, uh, human. You can do uh, one degree clicks there, too, so it won't be so radical. <laughs> I like it, Jonathan. That's really yeah. cool. Awesome. Second. That's wrong. I just keep running that shot. That looks great. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right. So as you keep moving in that direction, yeah, start swiveling. God, we're like one mind, Dan. Keep swiveling, back up, and back away from the wall again. Roger. And I'm thinking now to try to reveal or otherwise light the top part of this cliff so we can actually see how high the columnar formation is. Uh, we can come right up. And All right, let's start doing that. I'm going to come a little closer to it before we do yep. that. Don't get too close, because we, we can see... I'm, uh, seven and a half meters away there. Yeah, go go on up. Light, light. And with uh, Atalanta, can we get as much light on top of the cliff as possible? Yeah, so don't, don't move anything yet. Okay. Just let me know. Uh, about five meters away there, John. Yeah. Okay, now we can bring the whole mess up yep. slowly. Okay, hey man, I'm gonna slowly come up, so if you can hold that view there. We're just gonna let her uh, slowly float up here. There's the shadow. I'm gonna stop record. Thank I'm you. Stopping. That was it? Nope, I'm just waiting for you. You got zero beans on Hercules. I'm trying to get my shadow centered up and coming up uh, slow here. That. Video is uh, doing a watch change a little early. Uh, you can come up just a bit faster, and we'll get that light up above uh, that light pole up above Herc. Got it. That's a cool shot. You back. Oh, never mind. Can you back Atalanta off away from? Oh, oh wait, that's not an easy move. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Is the the angle of the light on Atalanta good? It's a little too top down, but we can't really change that with the ship move. Okay. Not in any expedient fashion. 
That's cool. What do you think? Turning port or starboard? Starboard for my tether. You can see Roll it coming it. off my port. Yep, yep, yep. And start cooking on beans all the way down. Right along that cliff edge. That looks absolutely incredible. Okay, and that's a good height there for Analenta. Yep. You can uh, come all stop on Analenta. Should I be rotating yeah. at all? Keep ahead of it, will you? Come on. Yeah, I can look to your right just a little, light it up there. Uh. Okay. Happy? Yeah, it's boring rocks now. Got to totally. find something more totally interesting. Totally boring. Can we do one shot while we're so high and kind of close to Atlanta? Um, let's turn around and uh, sweep, sweep around so that Atlanta gets into the frame. Oh, you want to look at Atalanta? Yeah, with let's Herc. look at let's look at Atalanta with Herc while we're here and just uh, blow out the lights and have a really cool cut. Um, if you look to your left a bit now, Atalanta. Rotate to the left. Yeah. That's cool. That's usable. You want me facing Hercules or No, look to your left. Okay. Or to your right, one or the other. I'll, I'll, otherwise, I'll, we'll see All right, lights. that's good. Yeah, that's good there. See what happens when I come up. Yeah, it's... There we go. That's what we want. That's it. That's the shot. That's stupid. Why does it keep freezing? Very cool. It is cool to see these images of our our tools that we don't normally yeah. get, you know? Usually this is not allowed. Okay. <laughs> Should I? Oh, no. The ROV is yours, Dan. Do what, you, do what you will. I got this shot. So there are, we got watch change coming up, and then we've got this uh, event afterwards, too. So yep. you've got, like, little yeah. pockets of time probably to accomplish things, but we shouldn't. We should be in something interesting when they flip. I'm gonna this uh, to us. turn my lights back on and uh, untangle myself here. You're Roger. If you're good. Yep. You're good. good. Okay. You can uh, look back to your right a little bit. Actually, stand by one one thing at a time. Let me get Herc out of there and make sure okay. our tether's not uh, torn up or tangled up. We only have the one tether, so. It's uh, easier if we just change one dynamic at a time there. Do you think we could go back to the uh, the melted noodles spot? Something yeah, like was that? What's, it your, was what's, your, what's your plan? Quite clear uh, where that the, was. Whatever we want to do, these waypoints were just suggestions that once yeah. you get what okay, you need you in can, the can, uh, we could go explore. Look, look to your yeah. right a little. So if you have a... There was that one spot, I forget when, in the dive, where there's the kind of melted noodles. Yeah, I, I want to say they're to my to the north. I uh, asked that we, we saw them when we first came down on this dive. When yeah, we first I, reached I agree with you, Dan. When I when I came in here, we were yep. looking at wet noodles. Melted noodles, melted candles. And that was just it was shallower. Three right? zero north. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, I can't remember if it was the next cliff up or not, but I think it was. But, but in any case, I'm uh, three zero north. Right up. Okay, we're back in the box. We managed not to tangle our tether up, which is always a bonus. Okay. 
I've never had so much fun flying around in the dark. Dan, you're still lights off, huh? Oh, no, I have uh, her lights back on okay. there. I'm uh, moving a little faster than I was before. I know the neighborhood now, so, you know, it's just like your own uh, waking up in the night in your own, uh, you know, walking through your own bedroom or living yeah, room yeah. versus waking up at a friend's house in the dark. You try and do the same thing, and you wind up banging your shin on the coffee table. I was saying the same thing. He's uh, when he's on the ship, he's always been in, you know, the what is it, cabin four or something or sixteen, right. sixteen, and he was staying up forward on this oh, trip. <laughs> he's in the middle of the night. He didn't know where. He knew he was on the ship, but he didn't know where he was. <laughs> Uh, you can you can uh, look to your left now. I think we're gonna have to do a ship move. Uh, let's do uh, let's try two zero. Uh, it's actually quite quite a few particulates in the water here. So water right quality here. isn't quite as good. Uh, just to be safe, let's do uh, three three zero. Those three, fish four, five, shots though were here. amazing. Yeah, I just feel bad that. That even up here, we're not seeing the resolution that you're seeing back yeah. here. Yeah, something like that. And then reminding we, well, myself that the cameras we are can probably go due north because like we know significantly. this yeah. is the cliff face, so it actually yeah. So you can do ah. due north should be okay, but we're a bit close there right now, you know. So you never know how it's going to go or if the ship's going to go five meters this way then this way. So. All right, I can. You know what? This dude due north, I'll come up to the top of this cliff here, and then uh, Atlanta can come up a little as well, so you're up above the cliff, and then you can just go north. You want me to go up? Yeah, you can come up and uh, maintain that That's kind of a nice so. view there, showing the step stones. <laughs> yeah, I like that, too. Yeah, we're good. Uh, you can you also, get a, when you get a chance... Feel for the hexagonal um, kind of shape yeah. when you can see it like this. Hey, uh, Dan? Yeah? Would you mind doing lights off on Hercules so I can grab some of this? Uh, yeah, we'll have to, uh, let me bring Atalanta around there. Or, uh, human could do it. Can you bring, uh, can you bring your head to, uh, the north fish and look up a bit? Right, you're STF, so we're going to do a shift change as well. Good luck on the rest of your... Thank you. Exploration. Good work, Devin. Thanks. Yeah, it should be good somewhere in there, and then uh, look up with your runaway camera. Look up. Okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, I'll have you uh, bring your head to the right just a bit more to put the uh, yeah. put the lights back on Herc so I can turn mine off. Ship in motion. Roger. Maybe come up just a bit more. Okay, I'm going lights off, Jonathan. Uh, maybe come up. A uh, couple of meters. I'll let you fly where you'd like to. Yeah, I was trying to get back in the light pool there. We're moving the ship too, so it might be a little. Uh, Getting better or worse? Uh, no, it should be getting closer to me. Okay. That should that should do it, in theory. Should be good there. Uh, you kids can do a handover if you want. Cool. 
We're uh, doing a ship move now, so I'll keep an eye on things. Ship move in the dark. All like right, I've stopped recording. You can go lights on if you need. Roger. Up to you. I'll just do lights on while we're doing watch chain and stuff. You know how yeah. it gets in here. And we're moving the ship, so I'm going to keep uh. looking for wet noodles. Um. What was I going to do? Was something I was going to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this guy can be a uh, sector width. I don't have to wait for the scan for so long. Okay. I can actually go uh, do that. No, no, that's useful. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I better fix that because if I suddenly need to switch back. Yeah, they were. No? Yeah, okay. you are correct. Gotcha. Sweet. Ship move complete. Right You're making me nervous with your hand right there. <laughs> It makes me look. Is she coming up? Is she coming up? Is she coming up? <laughs> a good thing to check when you first come in here and sit down is uh, the gauges. And you might have a go at uh, clicking the dive log and see if it's even been updated. <coughs> uh, if you want to, you can full screen that and make a new one, a new sheet for this uh, dive. I just right click at the bottom there and say duplicate and then change the name and uh, but I won't give you grief if you don't do any of that but you should know um, uh, where they are and if you want you can also H11 and put uh, brow cam on H11 to uh, if you want to be able to see the gauges better And maybe glance at some of the other numbers that we typically look at. Like yesterday, we had a ground fault, and I didn't notice, or maybe I didn't notice the DC ground fault. It's hovering. Okay, is everybody settled in? We have the, the watch fully changed. Johan, you are going to be on this watch? I am not. I should be. Okay, so we should. Soon. So your your replacement should be hopefully here soon. Roger. 
And Dan, you're all settled and ready to move on? As far as I know, uh, we are we are indeed moving on. We're looking okay. for wet noodles, all the right. ones we saw right in the beginning where we had to run away up the cliff. Yep. And then we came back and found, and if memory serves, they are off to the left here somewhere. All right, so we're just going to go exploring for a while, and, and uh, if we give up here, we can just continue on along the wall. Here comes Chris. Good. Sorry for the noise there. I didn't mute my microphone. I was monkeying around with my uh, mask. I think the noodles were deeper. Anyone have a notation on noodle depth? I want to say uh, 1680. Uh, let's see. Let's see what I got in my notes. 1675 or so. What's that? 75? Yeah, something like that on that order. All right, there. Chris may have a waypoint there. I'll have it. Yeah, he might. He may have dropped a dropped a marker. Well, he's going down, and he's looking for the the droopy noodles, as he calls them. Right. Um, Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Dan. I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, you remember when we came up to the wet noodles yesterday, and then we had to run away up the wall real quick? Yeah. So we were doing that long transit, and then uh, we came in, we saw those wet noodles, we went, ooh, we ran way up the wall, mm -hmm. then we came back down to them. Yeah, I thought this was the, I thought this was here. I think it should be north, of, just north, the north edge of this, I thought it was. Yeah, so and, we and think. It and it was deeper. I we think. think it was north, but I think I jumped up this step, so. Yeah, if we. If we go the down. Left, the left display. All right, and the right, yeah, so the Atlanta, uh, and Atlanta, I don't know. Another say, clue, Atlanta, so. another clue, uh, when I uh, came in the room, right and at, uh, and the, and when we hit seabed on this dive, mm -hmm. we had wet noodles in view, and I think I then, since then, came up, so. Okay. Let Those me see what I can figure out. Two clues. Other than that, no, I'm I don't pretty think well I, lost. Yeah, I think I think we're really going <laughs> to see something. Yeah. Can see someone uh, explain to what? our viewers what they mean by wet noodles? Okay. Yeah. It's kind of just a, oh, sorry, uh, a little of figure of speech there, that uh, <laughs> somehow the pilots have. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're exploring this uh, remarkable yeah. area of uh, columnar uh, basalt. Say that these, one more these time. These long columns that form as a result of uh, oh. cooling. Yeah, Roger, don't, don't worry about it for now. Gauges magma. are good. If it has and enough time to cool, it'll cool in this way you where it forms your, either uh, hexagonal or pentag pentagonal yeah, yeah. Uh, You can go columns. back to your ROV pilot there. And we'll, uh, we'll sometimes they're very, very uh, straight. Run through that one But more. sometimes because when volcanism Not is going on, it's a very dynamic process. Sometimes some they'll people. be bent and curved. And and we yesterday uh, came to an area where they were so all curved and they looked like a bunch of You said you saw them when we came in? Noodles. Today? Uh, correct. Yeah. So wherever we, wherever we uh, came down on the, uh, wherever we acquired the seabed, and not long after that. I think I'm thinking they're 25 meters below us on the next step. Yeah. So if you look here, I see lots of colors. Yeah. The purple boat. <laughs> That's all I can make out. Yeah. From here. Well, I'm looking. It looks like there's another step down here. Yeah. This is the Norbit data from yesterday. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this shows, one, where we've been, and two, right. the kind of depths we've been seeing there. So I need to be, ooh, here's the columns. Yeah, yeah I need they, to be deeper, 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 deeper. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you want to come down for me, right? And uh, you, I'm actually, don't believe your nav screen right now, since we have no DVL, I'm actually on the, uh, east side of I'm going to switch you to. Yeah. That would be less confusing for the. Oh, OK. Uh, thanks for telling me that. I've been looking. <laughs> oh, that yeah. makes more sense. There uh, we okay. go. I'm going to. Uh, this is 
been fussy about, I'm going to reset this real quick. We should, that worked yesterday okay. to get it to actually follow the USBL. Yeah. So what you're looking there we go. at right now, if you just joined us, is we'll just stay on USB for this dive. Formation. Might as well. Yeah, yeah it's uh, okay. Now That's the positions are accurate. Will the snail trails reappear, or no? You'll just have the the breadcrumbs. Roger. Um, I can't get accurate. USB and snail trails, huh? Well, you get yeah, you are getting USB all snail trails, but the like they're not. You yeah, aren't not, getting not constant. Line. Yeah, right. Uh, well, the other ones aren't it. lines either. They're points. They're just really dense. Oh. Because, yeah. Many pixels. We should pump my solution into here because that would give you both. We, we had it set up on the last Navest. Really? Yeah. But now we have a new Navest. You know why I was coming down so slow? Because I was in auto depth. Maroon. <laughs> the wrong button pushed. Uh, so yeah, so I back away to the uh, west a little and find the next step. You think? Because that's I think that's 1670, your or do I come more north? What do you think? No, I think I would back down to the next step. Right. I have another. I have additional data that we might be able to use. Of course you do. Uh, I'm gonna try to pull it in. Uh, of course I do. Yeah, I'm going to probably come. Uh, I'll try and get under you a little bit. Because you're going to be. Uh, we might have to. Uh, if that's what we want to do. Oh, yeah, there's the other step. We'll have to move uh, 20 um, that way. West. All right, if everybody's calmed down, Ollie, you want to uh, start with some can introductions? You move the ship 20 meters west, sure. Um, 20 meters west, Roger. Yeah, we'll have explain to explain yeah. what they're up to. Move out. Yeah, to the you next want, um, step. Well, I guess I'll go first. Yeah, that'd um, be great. So, my name is Ollie. I teach seventh grade science at Memorial Junior High in Eagle Pass, and I am uh, a science uh, communication fellow here on board the Nautilus. So it's my job to read the questions that are coming in from online and uh, kind of facilitate um, everybody out there, uh, you know, understanding was, what we're yeah. doing. Oh. And I also do web interactions. So if there's uh, any classrooms out there that would like to sign up and talk to us, um, you are more than welcome to, right? You will find the, the information for that at the top. If you click on education, it'll take you there. Um, there's also lots of resources on the Nautilus Live website that you can um, take a look at. I had an interaction this morning with some really cute pre-K kids and they had made the crab it hat. Be good to keep it was precious. <laughs> um, do you want to? Yeah. yeah, you're okay, just Dan. You're, you're. Hi, I'm Dan Dietz uh, from the Office of Naval Research and uh, I'm a scientist that does underwater technologies. And, uh, we're here just uh, working on the camera technology. So oh I'm sitting in the seat here. now where they're oh, recording different scenes for immersive um, uh, high resolution imagery. It's 1690. We is actually have a question 2D? about that, Dan. Oh, okay. Um, what is this camera tech called and what makes it different? Oh, so it's, uh, they call it triclops because there's actually three cameras. And, but what really makes it different is these are low light okay, special uh, cinema, you're gonna have to come back up. cinemography cameras that they use for things like IMAX and that type of you know quality. So you're getting very high resolution quality out of these cameras. So they're brand new. And if I could interrupt for a second, I think this is the, Danny, you think you're, you're close to the spot now? I don't know, I'm 1700 here, so yeah. I don't know if we ever got a depth. Yeah, but I think this is kind of what I think what uh, J Jonathan is looking at because you can both see the top. All right. If if you were come up a little, you you can see the top of these features, and I think he was looking for something that he can view kind of top you down. Want me to record. Uh, we were looking the for the wet noodles. Yeah. What we're calling wet noodles is all of these that were kind of curved up. Right. Right. Okay. Well, we'll keep looking then. I think Hold they're on. I think they're a bit more to the north because it was taller, and as we went to the south, things got. Uh, Things got shorter. Shorter, yeah. 
So we're moving the ship, so that's going to take us. Uh, OK, I'm sorry. We, we have to that. stand off the cliff a bit, but I'll, I'll come and look the other way while I'm waiting. Yeah, you're 10 meters away from the wall there. Yeah, so then you can continue describing the camera, I think. Uh, I think I'm kind of done with it. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're just really nice, high-quality cameras. So they're next generation. So we're, this is the first time they've been in use. We're testing them out, and we're going to see how well they do. But uh, they're looking a, tremendous. Uh, snail yeah. from so what the little so what? No, this isn't high pack. And, and yesterday, yesterday we had them configured in a way to it does, yeah. but enhance it, the really wide field it's view unreliable. and be able to create a, a full 3D uh, scene. And today it they're likes to reset configured on you. in a way where they're more pointing forward uh, to really concentrate on a high quality view of what's exactly ahead of the vehicle. And that's going to be used for a more immersive environment. Um, the 3D scene we can use uh, in, in a way to yeah, explore the there. data in ways we haven't been able to do before to see all that that three-dimensional context when the, the data collecting today could be used in a in an IMAX theater really allow lots and lots of people to see in full resolution um, and, and really immerse themselves into this uh, wonderful place that we're sitting right now yeah I think that's a good point Larry it's just um, these same cameras they're the exact same we just pointed them in different directions we were able to get a 3D representation of this basalt column wall that, you know, able to really pick out the features and be able to that tell the distance of how big that those columns again, are, how tall they are, how What's wide, uh, what yeah, the structure yeah. is, what the pancakes are. So when geologists go I'm back right. and really look oh, at no, it, they have right. a much I'm better right reference under. compared yeah. to just a 2D visualization. So that's the type of power we're getting with these new uh, this new technology. Uh. And if you tuned in yesterday, Jonathan was rendering some of those and looked really, really cool. In real time. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. In, just yeah. a few minutes after we collected it, he'd, he'd hit the button and yeah. then we'd uh, we'd back here be seeing this uh, <laughs> amazing reconstruction. It re really was impressive. And yeah. that's one of the things that, you know, you see is you see all the white snow and that limits visibility. So you, lots of times you're only seeing, you know, up to 10 meters ahead of you, but when you start to can, pull this, you can really see the extent of this the whole big feature. For me. So that's the power that this brings of this 3D visualization tool, is yeah. we can start to say, did we see it over here, did we see it here? It really allows that full situational awareness that we just didn't have before. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've always been taking video, and sometimes some very high resolution video, but then you have to sit there and go through hours and hours and hours of video to pick out this and that. Yeah, what, uh, the and other you're not clue, necessarily Chris, seeing you look at our, context, um, you're just seeing what's in the, those our frames. Dive path from the last this way we can explore, explore uh, it all at that high resolution, but in context, dive. like we're mm -hmm. walking we're doing around the Elkrod, basically. There. Or we're doing a long move, really just like and we came over night. and went up really fast, and then came down. Yeah, exactly. Where that's we really went what up we're doing is where here the wet with that. were. But imagine if we right. shine the flashlight all over, and now we can see the entire thing. And that's what we really get out of this. Yeah. Um, Larry, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I'm uh, Larry Mayer. Uh, my day job is the director of what's called the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire. And I'm serving as the watch leader here. Taylor Ann? Hello, everyone. My name is Taylor Ann Smith. I am a science manager on board of the Nautilus, and I'm sitting in the data logger seat. So I'm taking captures through the Hercules Zeus camera, taking notes and observations on everything that we're doing and seeing as well as taking down some timestamps of when we're starting our models uh, or recording um, on Triclops. Um, Chris, is yeah. okay time for you? Pass it up to Chris. Hey, uh, sorry, I was doing navigation things. Which is actually more important. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm here, I'm here now. Uh, uh, I'm Chris Krasnowski, uh, I'm here as a now you're uh, I'm working here t today as a navigator and a high-resolution acoustic mapping specialist. Um, my day job is a robotics, marine robotics researcher at the University of South Florida. Dan? I'm Dan. I'm currently yeah. sitting in the Hercules seat okay. looking for wet noodles. And you're the pilot of Hercules, yes? Someone typed in, someone get Dan some sugary snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the right depth, and I think it's to our left here. Right? 
right? Hey, I'm Rai. I'm sitting in the Atalanta seat, and I'm an ROV intern. This is my second day piloting. <laughs> um, and normally I work for a company called Ocean Networks Canada. I didn't know that. You want to uh, look to your left a little for us, right? And who do we have over in video? I can't Manel. see that. Go for it. Hi, uh, my name is Manel Morangi. I'm the video engineering intern on uh, this expedition. And my day job is a science communicator uh, for the uh, coastal resilience and yeah, aquaculture um, things at uh, Maryland Sea Grant out at uh, College Park, Maryland. Excellent. And to explain why we have two pilots down there, we have actually two vehicles. And I don't know what's going out on uh, on the... Uh, so, uh, feed one is yeah, from Hercules, right? and feed two is from Atlanta. Okay, great, so yeah. So that's looking down on Hercules, so that's, you know, we kind of have the overwatch, the lights, and so our safety. All right, so Hercules is the, the vehicle at the end of the tether, um, and that tether allows it to be decoupled from the motion of the waves, and we're having quite a bit of motion these days here. Um, the wire comes down, and it's connected to Atalanta, um, and that's the one that's suffering from the motion, and it provides the lighting and, and a camera view that lets us see the context of where Hercules is. Uh, so in your, in feed two, you're seeing the view from Atalanta, and um, that's so we have a bunch of lines. Buoyant, so, so Hercules is not bothered by, uh, or shouldn't be bothered if the pilots are doing their job, which they always do very well, by the, the wave motion from above. Uh, and then we get the very close-up views of things from Hercules, uh, which you see in feed one. Yeah. Someone typed in, so basically it's the deep sea version of going from the iPhone 5 to the iPhone 12 Pro. I yeah. think that's a great analogy. Uh, Jonathan would probably get a kick of that, but he'd probably say, a, I would say iPhone 14. I would say 14 because <laughs> that's a big camera upgrade, and I love those camera upgrades. <laughs> it's got their nice night vision. Because you got to remember, these cameras, you know, right now they're at probably about 2,500 pounds per square inch is what the pressure that they're feeling down mm -hmm. there. Uh, where are we at? Um, 1,600 meters? Yeah, meters. yeah that's about 2,000, 2,000 mm -hmm. PSI. So mm -hmm. they're not just regular cameras that are housed and, you know, we, we have to do all these special things to make sure that everything survives at that tremendous pressure. Well, who knows? Maybe the iPhone 18 will uh, be good to 6,000 meters. <laughs> I know it's good to 100 feet. <laughs> Uh, somebody wrote in, is this a live video? Yes, if you're watching oh, on NautilusLive.org, it is, it is live, and it's also available on YouTube Live. So, so think about that. Think about that wherever you're sitting, that you're seeing a live feed from 1,700 meters. So what is that? Uh, 4,000 yeah, 4, yeah. 4, something feet below the surface. So it's really quite remarkable to think that we can do that. And what we're hoping to accomplish at the end of this leg is not only to let you see these sort of amazing videos. Right now we've backed off the wall, so you're not seeing too much of as they're maneuvering to try to find the wet noodles, as, as, as they call them, but to also allow you to see that in a, in a truly uh, virtual 3D experience. And that will be, a, again, a, a, great, a great step forward in our ability to understand what's going on in the ocean. Look at that. That looks rather noodly to me. Have we found the noodles? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I see the curves on the bottom. <laughs> now, if we have any uh, pasta specialists, we'll have to uh, <laughs> tell but, us. Uh, yeah, because we had pizza boxes yesterday. <laughs> That's <Yep>. right. <laughs> so. Now we All right, noodles. so we've decided that this is the wet noodle wall. Keep the carbohydrate theme. <laughs> All right, this is the mi minor wet noodle wall.
starting to see more curvature oh, off yeah. Yeah, to that side. Yeah. Actually collapsing. Yeah, I just asked him if, if yeah, yeah, we're going to get the word from Jonathan as whether he wants this recorded or not, and mm -hmm. should know that in a moment. So where exactly is the control van? Is it on the ROV? No. Oh, no. So uh, it, it, you can actually um, explore the technology <clears throat> used on uh, the EV Nautilus, and there's, um, if you click at the top, it says something in tech, I forget what it says. Um, where is it? But you can see um, kind of an overview of the entire ship, and you'll see this big white box that's really made of three mm -hmm. containers, and that's the control van. So these are remotely operated vehicles. The uh, pilots are sitting right in front of me and they are the ones driving them around. They're the ones operating these ROVs. Chris, when I see the display you have up now, the... Um, this one? This one there. The, um, how do I tell Herc from... Yeah. Atala? Uh, so we have a couple position sources on Hercules. Uh -huh. Those guys are up here. That, They're the that's her, okay. the red and the orange trail. Right. And Atalan is behind. And Atalanta is the yeah. diamond shape down this okay. way. Yeah. All right. Uh, the two other the Herc fixes are USBL yeah. and the uh, EKF solution that I use for naving yeah. or yeah. for mapping. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to teach Hypac to have different symbols I can, or colors or something like that. I can let me make this a little more reasonable. Can do. Give me one second. Oh, that's a red. There we go. And let's just try dark. Kinda. So we got lots of questions uh, about ROV. Uh, is one of them non-tethered? Uh, they are all tethered, though both ROVs are tethered. So we have a cable coming off the ship that goes down to Atalanta. Oh. And then there's a cable that goes from just, Atalanta to Hercules. Just, and that's how we get all our information <laughs> transmitted up to the ship and then to satellite, to the Inner Space Center in Rhode Island, and then eventually your, wherever you're at, school or house. Um, how strong are the currents down there? Anybody that can answer that? Uh, the currents are not particularly strong right now, uh, but we can see currents up to three quarters of a knot. So think I, I, I can't hear you. Bit, think, uh, yeah, maybe about one mile an hour or something like that, which okay. yeah, is significant for so the so ROV. The if you wanted something like that's, that, uh, that can be a struggle and creates. Yeah, that goes, that's leads into our next question. How hard is it to control? That sounds like a Dan question. Yeah, Dan. You want me to? Oh, you got it. Uh, that also depends on uh, <laughs> the current uh, is is um, one of the ones we really struggle with. So if there's, a, as Chris mentioned, so okay. we've ordered a one knot current, Hercules can do flat out uh, of Oh, so we've barely been able to get uh, two knots. So we've been back and forth over this. We have All right. Waiting to see if this is something you want to record. Now you get the top, you get the the curves. It's not that the, large. Uh, this is not the real swoopy no. one. We're we're struggling to to find that. Um, can you just do uh, how are we set up for Atalanta? Do you want to get a little closer and at least 
Well, in your opinion, is this worthy? It's not epic like the uh, where we came in, and um, uh, if you keep going, it looks like maybe we started right around there. I can't. You'll have to give me a range of. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Maybe like 20 Thank meters you. south. All good. Yeah, Thank you. That's feeling good. Okay, let's move the ship. Uh, you can. All right. Put Atalanta. Bridge now. 10 meters yeah, off the wall to the south. She's yep, about 30 bridge. meters from it right now. Okay. Let's move uh, two zero meters, one five zero. That'll work. This is looking promising. They were all leaning that way. So I went quite a ways to the north and it wasn't there. So. So Jonathan's here now. Jonathan, do you want to introduce yourself? He just came back from lunch. Hey everyone, um, Jonathan, and uh, I'm Ocean Exploration Trust's media producer. So doing all things moving images and um, um, for this as a cinematographer with uh, BBC and no, Nat Geo, uh, I spent a lot of time um, working with cameras Venice. and developing Chris? camera systems to view the world in new ways. Keeping you busy. And um, yep. since uh, joining the Ocean Exploration Trust and working with Dr. Robert Ballard, um, he's been very consistent throughout his entire career about bringing the deep sea in new ways and in immersive ways to viewers and children around the world. And uh, we had the opportunity with the Office of Naval Research to develop this camera system that we're testing uh, right here on this dive and these incredible geologic formations of columnar basalt um, that does two things really well. T today, we are uh, filming immersive imagery, and immersive meaning this uh, style of footage that uh, you're seeing through just this main cinema camera is complemented by uh, two fisheye lenses. While we're moving, uh, you can and those fisheye lenses are meant to um, be projected in virtual reality. Come up and look to your so left a little. So putting on a headset and viewing things in a full 270 degree arc around you. Um, and also it meets the specifications for IMAX, Omnimax, um, and some of the largest distribution um, styles no for immersive, Is there um, Say again? No like full room waypoint. projection. So the, which one? imagine Where please like walking in with there your family or be, uh, yeah. a whole Hang class on. of students into a we museum or science center select. and there is the ocean yeah. experience. I think you guys so, came down, down slope of the waypoint though. And being surrounded by this yeah. incredible view of geology uh, know, uh, and of the deep sea. This, this world that oh, we yeah, live depth in here in this, this van. But, but so few other people right. can ever experience and that's that's going to be what we're really excited to to share with the world and then the other thing that you'll see occasionally pop up on sat feed three is we're also building um 3d models of everything that we see through a process called photogrammetry and those 3d models can be put into real time near real time simulators of what we're seeing for for video games and um, augmented reality where you can take an entire cliff wall of columnar basalt Bridge and actually view it right there in your south. living room. So really exciting stuff, very, very cool. fun stuff. Uh, application of technology like this in the deep sea is um, really awesome. Understood. Thanks, Bridge. It highlights the challenges of working in the deep sea. Like none of what we're doing right here is in any way revolutionary. We've been the industry for VR and AR and filming immersive content in um, the open ocean is, is here. Like people are doing, or I'm sorry, above the ocean is very mature, like really cool experiences. Oh, here we go. Wait, look at this. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh. hey, there you go. Uh, we've seen this one before. Oh. This is just a little micro. This is not the big sweeping wall, but we're, we're close. Right. We're moving right. south a little bit. We hope. We think we're close. I think this the is other the most excited is... I've been about geology for my entire time here. <laughs> geology is fun, Jonathan. 
This is good. Yeah, I was I was uh, talking to my uh, daughter, asking her to tune in with my five-year-old granddaughter, and she goes, "But you're just looking at rocks. Oh. Oh. When you have the sharks, what? we'll do that." <laughs> no. <laughs> but I think they'll they'll tune in anyway because I insisted. <laughs> <laughs> We have a question, Jonathan. Uh, 3D down. printers, could come this down, be Sam. used? Absolutely. And I am excited to announce just in the last uh, 15 to 20 minutes, we uploaded a 3D model of one of these columnar basalt formations to Sketchfab. Okay. And, so and, there, and there's a 3D printer on board. And, there is and, a 3D and I've printer already requested that uh, a, a little uh, 3D model of this be made for each of us. So. Yep. Oh, yep. nice. So keep that printer going. Well, I'm not sure it's <laughs> going to um, happen, but uh, I, yeah, I put I'm the sorry. request in already. Sorry, Larry. That's is that something that we can link to on the Nolasci website, like the <laughs> education resources and stuff? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you can we you might, can look up on uh, on Sketchfab if you're interested in 3D printing some of these stuff. Um, we'll uh, be making those public uh, as soon as we can, yeah. if they're not already. Can, uh, uh, somebody wrote in, "Hey, rocks are cool, and these are really old rocks." Say again. The, uh, these rocks right, can come down another five. I like that. How, do we know how old they are? These rocks. Dan, do you know how old these rocks um, are? Quiet. How about no. now? No, we do not know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd have to Sorry. cut them open and do some uh, yeah. stable isotope analyses um, to uh, you can come know. Down but there it. might be some research out there. I know they've collected samples from um, these places before um, and have collected rocks. So we could potentially figure that out. Yeah. And we're um, near some islands. Yeah. And um, I think I looked at the Oahu was like three to four million years old. So it could be around there. Obviously, the one, the rocks on the big island are younger, um, a million or less years old. Some rocks could be a day old because they just formed. South, make sure we're not missing it, but I'm pretty sure it was that depth. This is the other one, the second step that we were on. This is a pretty awesome rock wall here. Yeah. Is this the same one? We saw one. We were around it a little yeah, while ago. Yeah, we've been here before. Uh oh. I just uh, ran back up the step. So we're thinking, if you remember, we were coming across like it was kind of boring for quite a while. We were trucking along, trucking along on a long move, and then we had to rapidly ascend. So it was the first step that we saw the big, long uh, noodles. And uh, we're trying to get to that location. I'm just 
running around while we're moving the ship. So I think it... So I'm looking, this is from the survey yesterday. We have these three yeah, lines. I, I think we're on the bottom one now? No, we are... You think we're in the middle one? I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, there's one more below you. Yeah, headed that way now. On the other side of Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Roger. Uh, I can see it in Atalanta sonar there. Those, so those are 40 meters apart. Say what? They're 40 meters apart. Let me check. Uh, Delta Y. Yeah, 40 meters apart, 38. Yeah. I can see a hint of it oh. in the Atlanta you have a fan sonar. Layer. Or, yeah, well, actually, no, in Delta X, they're 25 meters apart. 40 uh, meters apart bounds like linear. Yeah. Bridge nav, two zero meters, two seven zero. Uh, come down for me, right? Yep. I think I saw a noodle. A little faster. Pulling on the other. What a great comment from the Marine Mammal Care Center. Listening in and watching as I write a grant, I might have to find a way to include wet noodle into my grant text. That would push it over the edge. Yeah. That would just make it epic. It's it's al dente. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Very. <laughs> Oh, Bloomin' Onion, yeah. Oh. Ah, see, the control van's already talking about food. Well, we started hey, with wet, really I, think we're, I think we're moving ahead. We started with wet noodles, now we're Blooming Onions. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it does look like a Bloomin' Onion. Yeah. Uh, Dan, do you think this is the, the spot? Mm, it's not the spot, but it's That's a, a good spot. spot. It's a nice spot, because it gives you that real top-down. Yeah. What does it look like? Um, how's Atalanta? No, light years away, of course. We're moving uh, south still. Can we, uh, do you feel comfortable trying something here? Or? I'd love to record anything that's showing kind of the, the al dente noodle formation uh, for. Uh, I, I think the Blooming Onion is uh, blooming much onion. more appropriate. Yeah, yeah, are we gonna change the name? Are we revamping things? I mean, blooming onions are pretty good. Yeah, no, and, it, that, and that really is what it looks like. I think that was a very astute observation. <laughs> <laughs> Outback Steakhouse, if you're listening, we are available. If you want to send us a blooming onion. For, for endorsement. Yes, that's right, shrimp. Yeah. We're gonna say. Oh. Yeah, come down. That's as far as I can go to the north, obviously, dragging you. So can we estimate the height of those columns from the, these aren't super, super tall, but I think they're, no. we should give people the sense of scale. Of okay, that. that's good for uh, the down right there. I'm highlighting all this, Jonathan, don't hit me. All right. Uh, also, the, uh, I noticed you press record. Do you want me to note that? I'm gonna come down to the south here nope. where you are. Okay, nope. I, I, I have to take a minute. No because my five-year-old oh. granddaughter, Kaya, has just signed in, oh. and it was her birthday just a couple of days ago, so I just want to oh, yeah. take a moment to say happy birthday to Kaya. Happy birthday, Kaya. Happy birthday, Kaya. <laughs> uh, someone commented, come no, for the we don't have to text sing. day for the food chatter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, so we went from pizza boxes to Wet noodles, Wet noodles, but now I think the blooming, blooming onion, onion is, uh, blooming is, onion. is uh, much more appropriate. So, are you recording it, Jonathan? Or? I did a little bit of safety, but I'll wait for uh, Dan to really kind of get set up. set up. 
Dan, I'd like to try the same thing where we uh, kind of reveal this. Right. Here. And I like the. I'd love to try this side lighting actually, and keeping ROV Atalanta kind of like pointed straight down almost at the formation, so that when we turn on the lights, Atalanta is actually in the frame. Does that make sense? So instead of Atalanta being behind ROV Hercules, we kind of keep it right here. Uh, no, you're good for that. So you want to keep Atalanta on top? Basically, yep. And and pointing its lights kind of straight down at that formation. So as okay. ROV Hercules comes and Atalanta turns its lights on, Atalanta will be in the frame. Sorry, say that again. So, uh... Keep Keep Atalanta there. I like that. It's kind of right on top of the formation. And Roger. Dan, you're going to back Hercules off. We're going to turn all the lights off again. And as we approach this formation, we're going to turn the lights on. OK. Um. Got to get that fish out of there. Are we, uh, <laughs> ship this still moving or no? No, ship is standing still. Roger. Larry Kaya says thank you. Oh. <laughs> so you want me to try to move it on top of you or? Kaya, you have a pretty cool grandpa. <laughs> I guess that answers the other question too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, move, uh. Well, not really. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, true, but sort of. I'm thinking uh, two zero, two five zero. Uh, no, it's going to be like zero four five Atlanta heading zero three zero zero four five something like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I was moving just a little behind, but all right. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Zero. That way. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was. That was the plan. Right. Okay, uh, bridge nav, two five meters, zero three zero. So, uh, patience back there, uh, uh, guys and girls. We're, so we have to get Atalanta where we want it. And uh, then we have to, once everything's stopped, have a look and see what the tether's going to do, whether before I can say we can do that or not. I trust you. Thank you. Yeah, so I, uh, what you're talking about there is uh, if I understand correctly, you want Atalanta in the shot. Yes. Again, yeah. Yeah, so last time we had Atalanta behind Hercules. Right. But this time I would like to try Atalanta being in front of it and being in the shot. So as low as Atalanta can get yeah, yeah. safely next to the, the cliff. And uh, so we'll do the all lights off. And when the lights turn on, Atalanta will clearly be in the uh, shot, in the shot and holding the flashlight and revealing, uh, revealing this feature. Yeah, a lot of motion on Atalanta. Look okay. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm not getting a warm fuzzy about that that's fine the uh so we have a couple ways to manage our tether uh one is the distance obviously between atlanta and herc yeah. and the other is uh to set uh use the current and put uh hercules and atlanta in such an orientation where the current's blowing it away so the current manages it for us right okay uh i don't know what a good analogy would be there parachute, kite, something like that. Um, at the moment, I can't really tell because we have the dynamic of moving the vessel and I'm all over the place. But kind of, uh, right now the tether appears to be kind of blowing up over Hercules. So yeah, we'll, see when, we'll see when we get there. I might be able to, it might be doable. I can't say yes or no until we get there, but it's... Okay, we got time. Just yeah. take, take our time and yeah. do it. Do it carefully and do it right. If we... Uh, I'll give you the same warning, Larry, as I gave the last uh, watch. If we get this tether tangled up and damage it, 
Uh, we don't currently have a spare. We, the only spare we have on board is the ONC tether, which is mm -hmm. miserably long, which long, would be yeah. not appropriate for this kind of work at all. Right. And we're short uh, one of the BSRs um, on the last dive of the last expedition. We separated the BSR from the back of Hercules, uh, getting out of the box a little there on a, on a weather launch. In hindsight, All we right, could we'll have just maybe waited a little approach longer. Approach it with caution. And yeah, so the, the minute you feel threatened, <laughs> you bail out. I well, I tend to uh, push the envelope a little bit. Robert was mentioned when he came up in here that I'm, I'm uh, taking a bit of an excessive risk with the tether there. Yep. We're here. We're here to do what you would like. Well, I'm. No, no. Yeah. We're Robert and I come from opposite like. backgrounds, right? He's a man <laughs> yeah. sub pilot. If he but does anything I bad, to but tell me he dies. Not but, yeah, but, but within <laughs> Where the, I come from, if I break it, I just launch the next ROV. Yeah. <laughs> so. so we're waiting for a ship move to complete for Atalanta? Correct. While yeah, the ship move is done. It probably is going to take a minute for Atalanta to settle out. Okay. While we wait, can you turn off all the lights on Hercules just to see what it looks like again? Sure. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's uh, work. 20 meters away still, maybe somewhere between 15 and 20 meters between Hercules and Atalanta. So it's kind of our typical oh, look at that. That, that's, that's, distance that's away. That's really cool lighting. Yeah. What kind of lights do you have there, Jonathan? Huh? Currently, that is uh, well, Atlanta's that's lights only. Oh, see, so you're just opening up the, yeah. opening up the aperture? No, These no, you're really good. Cool. We're, we're so yeah. Just uh, Ray wasn't in here before. We're using um, Atlantis lights to light up the scene, and Hercules flying around in the dark. Uh, so we're relying on our instruments. So uh, we have the sonar there. That's sonar. That's why that's in um, not in polar mode. So we don't have to wait for the scan to go all the way around because we don't. We know what's behind us, nothing. But a quick button change and we can get back there. And then, yeah, of course, altimeter depth heading. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a, sh uh, a step closer to the wall with Atalanta. Bridge nav, 10 meters, zero, 090. Zero. Absolutely epic. What? I said absolutely epic. Yeah, you know, yeah. So if you're just joining us, we are looking at some to keep columnar right basalt formations. As long as I can see it somewhere on the screen, I'm happy. And they, uh, beca <clears throat> because of the way the lava cools, it creates these hexagonal pillars or cracks, and we get these noodles or <laughs> blooming onions. <laughs> Crystalline <laughs> formations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, we have a good morning from someone in Sydney. Hi, Sydney. We are currently repositioning ourselves so that Jonathan can do his magic. We. Oui. Yeah. 
I'd love, I love just for anyone looking the exactly what it takes to position the cameras and the ROV and the lighting. We have a navigator controlling where the ship is going, which informs where Atalanta is dangling. We have somebody, uh, Atalanta pilot, who's controlling how high and what direction Atalanta is pointing, and we're relying on that to point where the lights that we're using are going and how far Atalanta is from ROV Hercules. Of course, we have uh, our pilot on Hercules as well, who is honestly the de facto camera person for this entire operation since these cameras are literally uh, strapped down to the front of ROV Hercules. So um, it's just, uh, so, we, so the pilot has complete discretion um, in terms of whether it points left or right or how slow or how fast it goes. Um, not to mention the entire back row back here who have planned where are the sites that we're interested in going? How do we get there? Um, what was interesting about the sites themselves? Um, and of course your role communicating all of this and, and doing such a great job fielding all these questions from, from our viewers around the world. So like at the end of the day, I'm just here squinting really hard at images and making sure everything looks sharp and and thinking about how this will look in a in a giant dome theater one day um but all i really do is click record at that <laughs> moment uh we have somebody writing in that's been watching since 2016 and wants to know when can i see this on imax <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't, we do not have a definitive date on, on any such things yet, but I can guarantee you that we, um, we, we have moved incredibly fast on this project, um, in all the good ways to, to support what we could do with, um, some good seed funding you and, got, and a, uh, Dan, in your Argosy, there's something floating on your, oh no, is that just a reflection? Okay. But in, in that spirit of using a small amount of, of funding to do amazing things like this, um, it, it truly is our obligation to, to, to move equally fast. And I'm excited to start producing materials for maybe VR in your classrooms coming up next year. That would be awesome. Um, and then, yeah, for, for full room projection, um, there's there's so many awesome opportunities for the museum and, and science centers around the world to produce experiences that, that share this footage. And if I could chime in, beyond, beyond the, the outreach component of it, which is phenomenal, there's also a very valuable scientific component of it too. I think the scientific community, the people who study these kinds of formations will be able to look at them and see them in ways they've, they've just never seen them before. And so you're, you're kind of covering all bases at that point. Yeah, I'm struck by the art. The gentleman that um, Pisces. I think this is about where you want to be, yeah? I like it. I like it if Dan likes it. Yeah. Larry, uh, who is the gentleman that made that fantastic painting of Pisces over this very columnar basalt? I don't know. The, he was on the he was on the submersible one of the first. Well, you can go back to the submersible log, and they, they have all the passengers on board. So, Jonathan, we're we're not going to be able to come up above Atalanta in this particular case. Oh, uh, I don't mean above Atalanta, just Atalanta kind of being close to the close to the wall. Oh, Raj. Yeah, yeah. when you say Atalanta in the shot. I thought you meant look at I it again like we did in the last. Oh, no, no, sorry. Okay. Uh, everything is in the shot mm. when you're filming with the fish island. I see, I sorry. see, I see, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you want to look to your right a little and see if you can light up 
that to the so you're the lighting source now. Okay, now we're gonna keep an eye on the top. Yeah, maybe there. right just a bit more. Yeah. That's good. So um The issue with having Atalanta right over the top of us and being low, close to Atalanta, with no current, which is what we have right now, is um, we'll wind up with the tether wrapped around Atalanta. Okay. So I can uh, move into the shot left or right, but I don't think I, well, um, if you uh, look down now with your camera, I'm nervous about backing up because yeah. the tether's kind of bouncing up Adal above Atalanta already. You can see it in Atalanta's tail cam. Yep. Uh, then let's, uh, let's just work with what we have right here. And um, facing the wall like we're doing, let's just slowly count. Let's uh, fly laterally to starboard. Roger. And uh, slowly spin to the port while you're flying starboard so yep like that flying starboard but hold on let me get ready to okay and just make sure the lighting f6, f6. is the hercules camera right now underwater yes those are the views that you are seeing uh in the quad right now uh, if you're i don't I don't think so. So we're breaking the rules again. We're 10 meters lower than we would normally be while we're right underneath Atalanta. Uh, what, I, what would help me is if you keep an eye on that tail cam. And so Atalanta's going up and down quite a bit. As long as the tethers, you, you get a glimpse of it behind you, we're OK. If you see that getting closer, um, yeah. <laughs> And in theory, is so you're seeing it off to your port side there because I'm to the port side of Atlanta, right? So in theory, as I move starboard, you should see that kind of bounce across behind you. And, then it, and everything should be good there. We might uh, hopple the tether, like where it wraps around itself, but we can we can do we can manage that. If it gets wrapped around the six eight above us, then it gets. A, yeah, especially with the uh, with the heave we have right now, right? It can get if it gets wrapped around, and then we heave and pull it tight. The lights will all go out, and we'll have a a lot of work to do when we get on deck. All right, are you uh, feeling good? Yeah, ready, ready. So I'm just uh, to the to the uh, left of Atalanta a little bit there, so you can see it's darker on the left and brighter on the right. Yep. So the plan, as I understood it, was move left to right, come into the late, and turn one way or the other. Negative. Go to the left and turn while you're turning to the right so that we can reveal the light fully of uh, Atalanta. Okay. I had that backwards then. Yep. <laughs> right there. You still happy with that from a tether management angle? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That puts the tether, the separation yeah, we're further increasing, away. Increasing separation. Right. We'll, make it, we'll make it work. I can always reverse the shot, but don't tell anyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not like you just said it on public. Yeah. yeah like everybody's listening. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you ready? Yep. It's born ready. Not too fast. No, you can't move too fast with ROV Hercules, that's for sure. Really? Yep. So the light's going to be changing a bit as uh, it's <laughs> that lens is coming up and down there. So and then fly forward now? No, fly backwards. Fly backwards. Right there. Fly backwards. Uh, Hercules doesn't do that. See, when I back up, see how the heading rapidly changes? I can, uh, that kind of didn't look too good. Let me try that again. It's 
Someone wrote in asking, uh, are there landscapes underwater? Yes. That's what we're looking at right now. Uh, there's a misconception that everything, uh, the, that the ocean floor is flat, and that is definitely not true. It's very, very interesting terrain. Yeah, sorry about that, Jonathan. No, this looks epic. I'm sorry you can't see. I'm sorry you can't see the uh, stereo fisheye pair, but this is exactly what was in my mind. It, it, it is. It is spectacular. I can hear the music already. But yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to back up Hercules and maintain a heading. This like driving a forklift backwards. It's okay. I can stabilize it in post. Roger. Just don't tell anyone. That's uh, 20 meters away now. That's probably All right. found as far as I can get. It's going to start getting bouncy because I'm at the end of my leash there. Okay, so now um, I would uh, drive forward full beans. Drive and, forward um, full beans. I think I'll give you a mark and you can turn on the lights of Hercules when I say so and then uh, kind of do a rotate around an object of interest. Roger. Use your eyes there and then, um, you know, rotate around something that looks very basalty, columnary. I think those yep. uh, swoopy at this, ones at this right kind there. of speed, yep. Yep. I'll let you know. I'm going to do this as soon as our uh, Atalanta's out of the frame. And start turning and you can turn on your lights. Keep moving to the right as fast as your beans. Oh, I'm about ready to rip the joystick out of the console there. That's yep. all she's got, Captain, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. 20 horsepower. Wow. Yeah, my, it's like a moped pushing a U-Haul truck here. So, yeah. Semi-warp semi speed. What's, uh, <laughs> I have a science question. If Hercules weighs 5,000 pounds and it's 20 horsepower, what's the power to weight ratio? Approximately one deer mouse per pound. <laughs> Compared to, say, like a uh, 40 horsepower Volkswagen that weighs 2,000 pounds. By the way, keep doing 2, what you're doing. Pounds. It really does look quite quite remarkable. Roger. Coming all the way around here. Yeah. To capture it. Yep. That. Larry, uh, we have a question about the shapes of the rock. Mm -hmm. Do you want to explain uh, how columnar basalt forms? Sure. Um, lava is formed in a volcano. Turn off your forward lights. Turn off my forward lights, Roger. It cools in many different ways, depending <laughs> on how much time it has to cool and how much pressure it's under. We can uh, back up here. And in certain yeah, keep, situations, keep when it has can. lots of time to cool and you have a thick flow of lava, it'll start cooling at the top and cracking. And, and in nature, you start raising altitude? when yes, things cool, they shrink. And that contraction pulls the lava away from itself, in a sense. And it does that in this hexagonal or pentagonal pattern. So you get uh, this, can I see that now? We're called there, stress Chris? cracks on the top, and they propagate yeah. down. Never mind. No, and what we see are these columns that no, have you got it. six right sides there. or five right sides. Um, and wow. uh, we see these in, in many parts of the world, mostly Look on land. Well, you did get Atalanta in the shot. Okay, that's Devil's Post Pile is one example. Uh, yeah, that's done. Giant's that Causeway done. in Northern Island, recording. another. Roger. And here we have the the really and special privilege of seeing this to, kind of uh, event, fill the this frame kind of feature with underwater. Really beautiful geometry, Dan. Let's get let's get danger close. Not danger close. Let's get responsibly close. Did you close. say get close? I think I think as watch leader, I have to interject here. <laughs> <laughs> um, just not, just some. Larry, we're not too close unless we're touching. Then we're whatever, too close. Whatever, uh, whatever, whatever well, looks the most interestingly. Um, Pattern-ish. It, it, it is Dan's cameras that are the uh, furthest <laughs> things out, aren't they? So. Uh, well, Dan, you you I, had you had yesterday to show us how close you could get to a shrimp. So let's not. That was a sponge. It was very soft. I was okay, polishing yeah, yeah, the yeah. camera that, lens. That looks, that looks really cool. I just picked the spot where there's lights. Here. Yep, and just just kind of just do channel your inner floaty 
Your inner floaty being. Yep, there you go. And Makes FYI, nice I'm 3D. still five meters away. Don't, you don't have to get too much closer, but Two and a half keep, meters. keep moving to make it 3D. Lots of parallax. You could drive a Volkswagen between me and the cliff right now. Lots of parallax. I got a student writing in. Hi, Mia. Now keep going. More beans. And look at those little pebbles on the top of one of the columns there. I can't how see. They're behind a giant Hercules shadow. How did they <laughs> get there? <laughs> Okay, never mind. That didn't work. I think five meter standoff is really our, our. Uh, I'm stopping recording. Five right. meter standoff really is the sweet. Well, zone. I had the lights off, so it's. I should have kept it at more of an angle there, but. Do you see those two beautiful? Um, there's two beautiful glass sponges to the left hand side of the wall, yeah. as you as you swivel off to the starboard. You're not seeing the Zeus yet. Uh, I'm sorry. Port. 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 Port, port, port. I just right gotta right give up right on right port right starboard right and just say left or right. Yeah. yeah. Jonathan's seen him. To the left. The, he's seen him in the fish eyes. So. Spin to the left. Right there. There you go. Now you should see him. Coming okay. On the edge. There you go. So those are our objects of interest. Let's. Come up five. Uh, right. Yeah. Come up five. And Taylor Ann, those are. Those feather get, corals. Get a right? little further away from them. They actually look like Walteria sponges. They're just really yeah. long glass spicules. Oh, gee. I'm not and even yep, close. Keep, keep <laughs> yeah, kind of going close. in that direction. <laughs> that like that is they kind of look like corals. They could Now let's reset the lighting be. on uh, Atalanta. I'm actually not too sure now. <laughs> I'm being you know, nice and patient, nice and slow. You can come back down a little bit it's there. As long as the tether's not hitting the vehicle, it was hitting there, so we can't have that. Too. If you see it hitting, just, yeah. Just while we wait, can you come up. Hit, hit me with some uh, some side lights, maybe? Uh, we're coming back down on Atlanta a little. To, we had to come up because the tether was hitting the vehicle there. Yeah, no worries. Can, can you try the port and starboard lights, the bio box uh, lights? I'm interested right there, if yeah. that uh, helps illuminate no, the wall. No, you're good. You can come back down just a little more. As those big waves come through, though, it porpoises. And <laughs> what I'm worried about is we porpoise down and the tether gets hooked on something on Atalanta, like the recovery hooks, and yeah, it gets messy. Gets messy. That's port and starboard on, mate. That's probably good there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that did anything, but keep on. Well, sometimes that shadow is very cool. Yeah. But oh, we've can got you, some kids can you back off from by Liberty. Just, uh, about a meter. There's some kids writing in from uh, Liberty yeah, Elementary so School get the who big, I talked to this the morning. The big heave there. So, yeah. uh, okay. Hi, Genesis. Hi, Sophia. Do you want to keep it like that, Dan? Roger. Holding there. And where is Liberty Elementary School? In Eagle Pass, Texas. Eagle Pass, Texas. Oh, okay, okay, now yeah. just do your South slow Texas. spin around that object of interest. In the dark? Well, get, us, get it as light as we can get. You're going to get... Oh, I still have all the Herx lights off, remember? Oh yeah, just do it in the dark first and then we'll counter the spin with the lights on. I think this looks quite nice, but I can't judge how noisy it is. So we have a question if we've discovered anything new. Uh, you're gonna see a little dust oh, there, John, if I come around, I, I got a little close new, to the wall there. Developing new technologies, yeah. applied in ways that haven't been applied before. Getting footage of this that never nobody's ever gotten footage of before? In a way, nobody's yeah. gotten before. and. I think that's the first step in discovering new things is improving the tools that we use to look for things. On. If I turn the lights on, it's really going to illuminate that dust in the background. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like before I stop recording. It's going to look like not very nice. It's going to look like pilot error. <laughs> A viewer wants to know what's the best rock okay, we found. Okay, let's uh, count that rock. spin. <laughs> What's well, that? These are among the, the best spin rocks, again, but uh, <laughs> right. to the right. These are yeah, very that'll get the dust out of there. Yep. And we might have some um, to the left. So. Full beans. Uh, Bob and I saw If I go full beans, I'll completely blow it out. See to the left there. That looked like this. Oh. They were black and uh, columnar, just like this. That, but they were in a that place was that we half beans, but I had 100% joy gain. So it just couldn't figure it out what was happening. And then instantly. That's it. This is the power of telepresence. Yeah is that we were able to send that question out Still to viewers. I think it looks okay. And a professor in Czechoslovakia said, I've seen stuff like that before, and was able to explain what was happening. 
Oh, that, yeah. that's that's. It. Yeah, Jonathan has a spectacular view on the fisheye lens here. Spectacular right. view of my dust storm. Well, it adds it adds to the ambiance. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate it when I do that. Um. Okay, I'd say I'm happy here, and let's go find some clear water. Some uh, <laughs> the place where where Dan hasn't messed everything up. Yeah. Right okay. Right. Let's. So we have. There's another ridge down lower that I don't think we've seen at all yet. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's what we want to do. We want to concentrate now on places we uh, haven't been. And kind of say, say again? Uh, I think that's exactly what we want to do is concentrate on places we haven't been before. Yeah, so that's yeah, if you look, I pulled the, the new data in. If you, I, I, I don't know if you that. can see on the high yeah. pack. So mm -hmm. there's another, yeah, and I don't think we were that low yesterday. Uh, we were, that's where we came in. That might be where the mega yep. spaghetti so let, let, noodles let's, are. Let's take a look down at the next level. Okay. okay. You can move the ship if you want. Yep. Yes, please. In the I'll spaghetti. come back down. Bridge, in. bridge nav, two five meters, two seven zero. I'm gonna drop down here. And we have till we have another two. What's that? Two hours twenty minutes. So we still got uh, we still yeah. got time. If well, no, wait. You might have to wait till we move the ship. You can come down uh, to where that cliff is. Ten meters away. Uh, it's like twenty meters. No, in the sonar. Oh. <laughs> I yeah, I thought you meant the next lower. I think it uh, the sponge that we saw. I think I think it was a sponge. Uh, it looks oh, similar yeah, to looked, a walk area. Uh, yeah. Um, you yeah, those like long things instead of being polyps are just spicules. Nah, you're good for now. Does no, it have a common name? So um, I don't have to say all that? Not that I know of, but I can look it up and see. <laughs> Feather sponge, I would call it. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Larry, we have a question asking, uh, what's the time difference between the columns uh, at the ocean floor compared to the ones at sea level? Uh, it should be. Oh, Ooh, that, um, that there's a heave. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good question. I can tell you how uh, old you the down. ones here are probably because the the island Molokai is not all that old. It's it's kind of on the order of two million years old. Okay. Now, if you go to something like Devil's Post Pile um, in California or the Devil's Watchtower in Wyoming, my suspicion is that those are many, many, many tens of millions of years older, but I don't know that for a fact. I can start looking it up, though, and I think I will, and hopefully in a few minutes, I'll have an answer. <laughs> okay, but we'll come back I, I'll, to you. I'll odds that nothing is as young that we see um, out there as what we're seeing here, because this is very, very recent, uh, yeah. recent volcanism. Um, and yeah. what was the you best can, creature you uh, have found lately? Down there. The best creature. The m the moose yep. fish yesterday was really cool. Yeah, that, that, I agree. Ships on the way. Right. It was super cute. So you're moving. You should you should dangle right about here once it settles out. Yeah. So you're moving away from the cliff, so you can keep coming down as you're moving away. And I mean, watch that one. If you get closer than 10 meters, it's yeah, it's probably about the limit there. I think maybe Taylor Ann, you can answer this one. Um, what kind of new animals have you found while you were looking in the ocean? Specifically on this uh, expedition? Uh, they don't specify. Okay. the hard targets are north um, or south? I think the most Can fascinating organism the I've seen are north or, oh, was that's, the Ossidax um, worms, data. which were bone-eating worms that I saw on the whale fall that we found in right. 2019 in Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Um, it was fascinating to see a whale skeleton on the seafloor, yep. and it looked fuzzy, and as we got closer, we realized they were worms eating the bone. Um, yeah, we'll keep that in the teens. And, and I got to dissect them the out of the bone, and they were really, really weird. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that's available on the we website. Go you can go digits, and you can explore the, uh, the 3D rendering of the whale fall that Jonathan Typically uh, not while so we're dynamic. That's really cool. Yeah. So you're, um, you're break, breaking one rule there. Otherwise, going I really like iridocorgia corals. corals. Three can be uh, catastrophic. They kind of look like a firework. Um, oh. They're really beautiful. They can grow really tall, spirally corals. What's your corals. gut tell you, north or south? I think that's one of my favorite corals. It looks like it's very, quite steep All right, now to the I've south, and the especially if you look down I here, right? Both right and very wrong. Oh, so. uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the. Educate us, Larry. Yeah, the Devil's uh, Tower in Wyoming is very, very old. Like I said, that they, they, su they suspect about 50 million years old for oh, that. Oh, wow, yeah. And, uh, but uh, the Devil's Post file in California, they say, is on the order of 100,000 years old. So very, very, oh. very recent, much younger than, than where we are today. 
Hmm. And I'll go look at... Where about in California is that? Devil's uh, Post Pile? Oh. Yeah, by Mammoth, yeah, in Northern California. Oh. And they're interesting enough that, that it, it makes sense because there's all kinds of hot springs around there too, which says it's still very hot, still very active. And the Giant's Causeway, the, the one in Northern Ireland, yeah, is be right above me now, 60 so. million yeah. years old. Yeah, the ship's still moving, so. Was, so. That's two right and one yeah, wrong. Yeah, ship stop, <laughs> but yeah, you should dangle right about there. Uh, you want me to hang out here? Do you think you got enough tether to check out? Yeah, I can right. go 20 meters or so. So All I right. went 20 meters one way and yeah, if we, I'm not getting any. Uh, if we're looking yeah. here, though, it, that's looking pretty steep. About as steep as anything Yeah, we've seen. Sonar is not really helping. Yeah, well, let's, you got to pick one. Let's go that way. Happy with that. Go for the steep stuff. Um, uh, yeah, you can move if you want, Chris. I'm. All right. 225 ish, maybe. Yep. Bridge nav. Let's move uh, two f two meter. To, uh, sorry, two zero meters. Uh, two yeah. zero zero. Hey, Jonathan. Looks like they're going or somebody, south. Somebody, somebody hit OK. Down, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. trying to yeah. Affirmative. Twenty two zero zero. Up on that one there. I don't know which cursor <laughs> we have to, we, There you go. Who's yeah, in you charge got. of this no. button? There you go, that one. That one, <laughs> that one yeah. Click it. Okay. Hey, thank you. I just had to find the right mouse. I got three in front yeah. of me. It was the wrong one. It's got three keyboards, three mice. Right, let me four move, screens. Let me move that out of the way. We have the same issue up here. I can yeah. I can touch at least three mice from where I'm sitting. <laughs> four if I reach. Ah. So what we're doing now is just exploring to find if we can find more basalt formations. Yay. We're now using the uh, ship's multi-beam data, which Chris has cleverly overlaid. Oh, no, Norbit's multi-beam data. Norbit. Oh, that's Norbit. That's that, why it's you, useful. You did that from yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I've never seen any of the ship's multi-beam data overlaid on that screen and be yeah. actually useful. But that's yeah. more of it. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a one meter grid, so that's plenty of resolution for this. That's why it's useful, as opposed to a hundred meter grid. Yeah, this is something we might have to try. Do a quick high altitude survey on something. Yeah. And oh, get and that you could data. put it in real time. Yeah. Oh, that would be sweet. Why well, I, I could have it cleaned and in, in there in fifteen minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we can total. We're totally set up to do that. Norbit's back up. No, no this, Nor th this is that's the data from yesterday from oh, Norbit. Yesterday. Okay. We uh, did that when we we mapped uh, the big caldera in the Tonga Trench, and uh, we flew around for three weeks with a multi-beam skid. Yeah. On Ropos, and um, it was very boring. We were we were flying basically on your version of uh, yeah the, uh, Norbit, right? All 3D, 20 meters up. To 20, 30 meters up, so really radical terrain, like going up and down. So uh, just using the multi-beam to stay out of the, for the most part, out of the pillars and, uh, you know, jump off the cliff in the valley and uh, get multi-beam data. That's what we did for three weeks. Yeah. And uh, then we, uh, and they were processing that almost real time, so we could do one pass. We are doing like six kilometer long runs and turning around, light yeah. loading and coming back. And uh, then we spent the next three weeks uh, flying around, exploring targets of opportunity. We had all, all the uh, multi-beam data overlaid yeah. on the net. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah. Yeah, and with a little better cleaning and processing, we could get even better maps than this. This is just like I cleaned out the obvious outliers. Right. <laughs> and that was it, yeah. And graded fairly coarsely. But yeah, we can cover a lot of ground at 30 meters with the with the Norbit. Yeah. And the yeah. cool thing about it too is you can uh, do a, a bit of terrain following from the 30 yeah, meters right. as you're going, right? Right. Real yeah. Time. Yeah. We have the real time maps. Yeah. And then we can make a.